Hey guys, today we're talking about perennial vegetables. There's been an increased interest in these and why wouldn't there be with the increased talk about perhaps the importance of food resilience and security uh, in the times we're living in right now. Um, and perennial vegetables are absolutely key to this as they produce for you year after year coming back from the root. You only plant it once and in most cases there's very minimal input, uh, minimal maintenance. So in this desire to achieve permaculture or permanent agriculture or permanent plants, think about perennial vegetables. They are paramount. Uh, they are the way of the future, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, so that we can just keep coming into the sustainable source of food on our land. And I'm going to share for you a list of five of my favorite ones that are not just like so-called edible but really not palatable like many plants we hear about but these are actually delicious and have so many good uses time and time again in our homestead kitchen so let's get started okay first up we have sorrel sorrel is like indispensable like my family and friends love this stuff the flavor is like it's kind of like like a sour apple it has like a tart to it but just a beautiful tart and uh, that is actually indicative of its vitamin C content. In fact, historically, it has been used to treat scurvy in emergencies. And it's just an incredible perennial plant. It comes back, it's long lived. This, this original one here has been with me for like several years. Um, and we go to this for, you know, basically chopping it up to extend salads fresh. Uh, my wife uses it for like the lettuce or in lieu of lettuce sometimes during taco night for the family. Mm. And the French and some other cultures make an incredible soup. We make it all the time. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of boil this up with some bone broth and of course onions and potatoes. Um, this plant is easy to grow. It really doesn't complain. If it's in full sun, it can you definitely use some moisture uh, to keep it cool enough. Uh, but otherwise it is just amazing, um, easy grower. It is actually one of the first greens up for you in the spring, so you can enjoy harvesting it. And uh, this is just a solid one on the list, sorrel. So next up, growing actually behind the cousin of number one, which uh, this is the the bloody the blood sorrel or red veined sorrel. Uh, not as tasty, by the way. It is beautiful, just not as tasty and a little more fibrous. But anyway, number two here is walking onion. If you haven't heard of this, go get it. It is amazing. It's a perennial onion. It comes back every single year. It spreads like crazy. In fact, it gets its name because at the top, uh, they'll, they'll form these little pearl onions, which are good for like crushing into uh, some foods or even pickling or whatever you, you're going to do with it. Little pearl onions. Um, they will weigh down the mother plant until it bends, and then it basically comes down and starts a new plant, hence walking onion. But this onion is delicious. Where this really shines is its beautiful, big, meaty onion greens. And we chop this up into all sorts of dishes. So we really use it for that. Spring and fall are really the best seasons for harvesting these, but they should produce for you all year. In fact, these ones at the top will sometimes have a secondary plants. So these will be a little bit old, but these will be new, like a second layer of beautiful onion greens. So. These are also indispensable to us, important part of, of the garden. We just love it. All right, guys, number three, this one I'm really excited about because many people haven't heard of it, but this is perennial arugula or perennial wall rocket, as they would call it. And guys, like this, seriously, this is like next level arugula. To me, the leaves taste just as good as arugula. Uh, some people report a little bit more spice than regular arugula, but I actually do not find that to be the case. I, I find them to be very, very, very similar. Come on, isn't that awesome? It's really good. <laughs> Yet, <clears throat> this comes right back for you every year from the root. It reseeds like crazy as well, so it can take over, but gosh, it's arugula, <laughs> which is amazing. And also, I realized that this bolts so much slower. In fact, even when it has begun to go to flowering stage like this, this is a yellow flower instead of the, of the traditional white, the leaves are still just as tender and just as delicious. In fact, last summer we were harvesting arugula and using it all summer. So 
definitely worth getting. Really amazing. Get your hands on this, get the seeds and plant it. Uh, you will definitely not regret it. All right, guys, number four, growing on the outskirts here and not really getting much irrigation because it's tough, is Turkish Rocket. Uh, this is not a true rocket, but it is in the Brassica family. Um, it's cousins with it. It is a tough, tough plant. It has a tap root that mines all the way down, so it's probably very, very healthy for you. Uh, the, the greens are, they're okay. Um, they're definitely doable. You can boil them and enjoy them. But where they really shine is right here, these fl uh, little flower heads that are basically like a broccoli rob, broccolini type of effect. Uh, it's really not that bitter. It's actually like pretty mild and delicious, steamed, boiled, sauteed. Uh, so we just love this plant. Again, like indispensable. Once you plant it, you will always have it. It does reseed readily, so be careful. Um, and this is just instant sustainable food. So enjoy Turkish Rocket. All right, guys, last but not least is Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes, as they call them as well. Uh, this is springtime, so they're just popping up, but they are an amazing tuber. They get these little sort of kind of like little potatoes. You can use them as well like you would use potatoes, except they are very low glycemic um, as opposed to potatoes, and they are high in inulin. They are good for diabetics, uh, and they are absolutely really tasty. They're also a prebiotic, by the way. They have like this artichoke type of flavor, which is probably where, where they got their name, obviously, but... Uh, Man, it like these things, they are like in a field all by themselves. Like literally, they really produce and multiply like crazy. In fact, some people say that they are rather invasive. I like that in a food that I'm growing. And Colorado climate does seem to keep them in check around here. But guys, like really, really a great vegetable. Uh, we actually leave them in the ground. And in the middle of the winter, uh, I'll go ahead and just tug on an old stem and bring some up. So the ground stores them for me and I'll just use them in either soups. Uh, you, can, you can saute them. You could chop them up raw uh, in salads. So uh, just a, an amazing root vegetable of many uses. Couldn't recommend them more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, perhaps maybe there were a few that you hadn't heard of and, and now are maybe on your plants to grow list. And for now, the rooster and I are signing off. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Until next time.